Hello, I'm back. I have um, the winter journal that we've been working on together. I've been kind of taking you guys along with me um, as I make this. Today I'm going to stitch in the signatures. I have a few supplies here. I have some waxed thread. I have a, a kind of a thick needle. This I think is a um, upholstery needle or an embroidery needle. I don't remember. I've had it a very long time. I have two binder clips that I use to hold in my pages. Pencil, um, bone folder really isn't that necessary right now. Ruler, scissors, and an awl. This is just a, um, this one I got at craft store. It's like a, it's called a beading awl, but I mean any kind of pokey tool that you can, uh, push through your papers. I have a scrap of paper here that is the same, um, length as the, my pages, which is important. So it's eight and a half because most of my pages are eight, my larger pages are eight and a half. Not all of them are. They vary in size. So I'm going to um, just kind of show you how I do it. I'm not going to talk through the process. Uh, you guys can watch me and kind of see what I do. So.
she's all put together and ready to be used some more and worked in and um, I've had a lot of fun doing this I'm gonna do a quick flip through and kind of show you I've been playing some off camera as well as um, I have some more on camera that I did and I will put that after the flip through if you want to watch that if you're interested in seeing some more of what I do Hi, kitty <laughs> A cat on my leg um so yeah i just tied a piece of uh sorry silk around it to hold it closed um my stitches are not perfect i did make a mistake well not really a mistake i just forgot that when you make a template like this for your signatures put top on one end so that you always line it up with the top of your pages because i don't care how many times i measure it and think i have it perfect one side always seems to be off from the other so if you were to flip it your your stitches will not line up perfectly if you're concerned with them lining up perfectly put the uh, mark the top of your um template so that you know which one is the top <laughs> which way is the top um so they're not perfect this one's a little closer to the edge than this one um but that doesn't bother me i left um a, quite a bit of space in the middle because it's quite full and I'm oh excuse me and I'm gonna continue to add to it um, and I don't care the fact that the cover is slightly flexible well, okay very slightly flexible <laughs> and the spine is flexible I can really just kind of squish it and, and make it all fit however I want to <laughs> so we'll just do a quick flip through I haven't done anything to the the, co the inside covers yet, and I don't know if I will. It's just kind of, this is kind of one of those books I'm going to work in as I go. Kind Work in as I go? Work in over time. <laughs> um, yeah, so the collage here you saw me do, I added another little, um, I don't think this was there here the first time. I added a snowflake um, wood piece there, I tied a little bow on with some stitching. Uh, stitched on a piece of paper for um, just some journaling. It's a piece of that um, the music, the player piano mu um, paper. Did a little stamping collage. You guys, I think I showed that. I added this, the owls. I did show this in a previous video. It's one of those. Um, um, I don't know what they're called, but I want to say viewfinder, but I know that's, that's not right. But you look through it and see the pictures up close. Um, and this one was from eight, late 1800s, some snowy owls. I do have the other side. I, I ended up cutting it in half, and I was able to peel the paper apart because it was really thick cardboard. Too thick to really put into the journal i was able to gently peel off um the top layer of that to make it thinner and um it's still cracked a little bit some of the um picture has a bit of crack but i'm not concerned with that i love the picture and i love the fact that it's from the 1800s i made this little collage here it's just a fabric piece of fabric i made a tag out of it by putting a tab at the top <coughs> Excuse me. Some um, pattern paper, vintage photo, some crocheted lace here, some uh, bit of, I don't remember if this is paint. I think this is paint. I also used a, a little bit of um, antique um, rub and buff too, and that may be what it is. I'm not really sure. I don't recall. This is just a lace doily with a little decal. Um, so, uh, glued on, not sewn. This is a paper bag. I don't have anything in it yet, but I can do that later. A uh, little glassine pocket here. This was an image, not an image transfer, sorry. This is on um, transfer paper, so it's transparent, and you can see the paper's collage behind it. Tim Holtz cabinet card. I just put a little tab on it. So that I can get it in and out easier. One of my photographs. Um, and I did some handwriting here. Um, if you saw the video, it took me several practices to get it um, to look the way I wanted. 
I wasn't trying to be neat, but I wanted it to be pleasing to the eye. I'm trying to get used to my own handwriting and do it in a style that I like. And um, this is kind of what I've been settling on lately. And it says very loosely, <laughs> ice crystals frozen on every surface you see. Another one of my photographs made into a journaling card here with some stenciling, a bit of lace and fabric. And I just put some masking tape along the edge there, the fold. This, I don't, I don't remember if I showed this or not, but I did, I had this piece of doily that I had cut out and it was a circle. It was a circle. It makes me think of a snowflake is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and I stitched that on. You can see the stitching a little better on the back. It's an old postcard. I'm not sure how old. There's no postmark or anything on it, so it's hard to say, but I like the image. Uh, pocket. This is brown paper. You watched me make that, I believe. This is just a, a piece of uh, children's uh, reader, a school reader. I liked the picture. This was the image transfer that we did. You can very faintly see the little girls there. I'm assuming they're little girls. This was from the reader also. Little Jan had played in the snow all day. I glued that on there. And did a bit of journaling in there as well. And this is a pocket with some lace and fabric stitched on there. Another one of my photographs turned into a card. Um, I apologize for the heater. It's very, very cold today. I'm very bundled up. I have a flannel and a sweater and as well as a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> it is very cold and I'm in the basement, so it's even colder than the rest of the house. A little collage here. I'm not sure that I'm completely happy with this. It says a white world, um, you know, referring to a snowy world. Uh, stamped on some paper with some cheesecloth. Um, I put the uh, thesaurus thing here for cold, cool, freezing. It has a bunch of different words for cold. Um, I've made, I put a, I made this pocket of an index card. I put a um, eyelet here, which I kind of messed up and I didn't put the eyelet on before I put it in the book. So I gently opened the pocket as much as I could to get my crocodile, not, what is it? It's not a crocodile. I don't know, it's the really big one that does the holes and the eyelets. Except mine doesn't push in the eyelet anymore. Anyways, I made and then I hung a tag off of that. It's a little like a little price tag type thing with some sari silk and lace and just the word hush. And down here is a line from a book. It says the hush of a freshly fallen blanket of snow. Or actually no, I typed that on the computer and printed it out. Uh, another reader image book page there stitched on. This is a book page from a book about trees, a northern white cedar, and I did some journaling there. The vintage image printed out. I did a little stitching here and the stitching on this side as well. Obviously it goes clear through and this is that um, the school attendance um, paper from 1919 or 1918 is very early 1900s uh, one of my photographs and it just says down here on this little piece of paper it says overcast skies seen through naked trees and this has some gesso on it um, this is quite plain but I will be adding to it I haven't decided what yet though <laughs> I had an envelope here um, and this is that other image transfer that I did on previous video with some collage that opens up and I just put another little snippet of that um, school attendance uh, ledger in there. It's, it's very old and fragile. <laughs> I'm trying to be careful with it. This is a bit of tracing paper stitched on to make a tuck spot. On um, This book is a um, French, uh, read, French reader, I guess you'd call it. It's a book to learn French. A postcard that um, isn't terribly old, but the image just matches perfectly with the book. And I really like it. Keep that there. 
put a little bit of that um, tape that's been dyed with the alcohol ink and put that around to the other side with the flap of the envelope. Um, put a piece of paper. This was cut from a paper bag and I just glued it on to make a little tuck. An index card that has been inked and dyed and then I did some collage over here. So it's Little Brown Rabbit with the, this was a, from a book page about animals, a button and some fabrics and strings. Threads, strings, what are you going to call it? Fabric stitched down here. Um, a couple different book pages. This was from a reader. The snow is deep and the street is blocked. Um, taped on this paper behind that was from a book of poetry um, uh, about a poem named called Snowbound. Just paper. Another image here. I don't know if you can see that of uh, bird tracks in the snow. And it says following animal tracks in the snow. Just some paper taped on. This is um, glued. This is a paper a book page also from that French reader um, that I gessoed and did some painting on and put on some fabric just to reinforce this fine. And then this was a piece of cardboard from some uh, food packaging that had the clear window in it. So I cut, well, I didn't cut it. I did have to end up making it a little bigger because it was cutting off the, the owls. Um, face here is cutting through that and I didn't, I didn't like that so I did take my scissors and gently kind of widen it and it's really rough and uh, rustic but I really like it I added this um, metal filigree piece here added some of the um, gilding wax around the edges I sewed that on and I hope you can see that yeah on this side did some painting and the wax on this side too just to make it look a little better. And you can see the threads where I stitched on the filigree piece. And I just really love how it um, frames the owls there. And this is the other side of that viewfinder thing and it says 1870 is the copyright of this. This is another index card that I just um, used my label maker and what's that called? Dymo? I think made the word cold um, and the little collage there was some of that alcohol inked tape and it has the letter C on it nothing fancy but yeah I did a little couple other things you guys saw me do this other image transfer with the collage so um, that's pretty much it the book is all put together I'm not gonna say it's finished I'll never I mean I may never be done with it I may, my life on earth may be over before the book is what I would consider done because it's kind of one of those things that I will just continue to grow, grow on, um, build onto and it will grow and with each year and add memories and um, things of that nature. This ribbon is crooked, I have to fix that. <laughs> So thank you for watching this series. I do appreciate the um, thumbs up that I that people have been giving me. I hope it's something that you guys have enjoyed. I know I've enjoyed making it, and I'm gonna enjoy working in it some more. Um, so yeah, af after this, right about now, I'm going to be adding in some more. Um, clips of me working on elements for the book. So if you want to stick around and watch that, feel free to. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.